Hey Fiber Friends, welcome to episode 15 of the Botanical Knitter Vlogcast. Just kidding, I'm not filming here, but I wanted to show you. Where I usually film is where my future bathtub is, so I thought I'd take a seat and knit. knitter, spinner, sometimes sewer, sometimes natural dyer, and I have a lot of sewing stuff today. And I live in Minneapolis, Minnesota. You can find me on Instagram as the Botanical Knitter and on Ravelry as Botanical Knitter. All right, enough silliness. Here is where I'm going to film today until I figure out, one, how quickly I can move the bathtub upstairs. We're adding a bathroom upstairs. Uh, or if this is like the permanent solution. I do like it because the window's open, so you might be hearing some chirping, some uh, nature noises. We have a family of cardinals that are nesting outside our area, so there's lots of cardinal trips happening, which makes me really happy. So we'll see if editing, if this is too loud, but I'm also very much enjoying the breeze coming through. I am drinking a recess seltzer. These are non-alcoholic seltzers that have adaptogens in them. They're supposed to help you focus and help with anxiety and what, it's mushrooms, ground up mushrooms. Um, does not taste like mushroom. This one is raspberry lemon, delicious, sparkling, love it. Hits the spot. Okay, let's start out with what I'm wearing. This is the Felix Cardigan by Savory Knits. I finished this a couple weeks ago and it is using yarn from Get Bent's Farm. It is a BFL Merino blend and it has these beautiful bits of sari silk spread all throughout. Um, big fan. Made in Northfield. Love it, love it. I had these buttons. They're vintage buttons from Lakes Makery, which is a fabric shop here in Minneapolis. This was my first time doing a button band, um, really doing a cardigan that was fitted like this. I think if, you've, if you're a way back viewer, I showed a cardigan once that's like basically a house coat that I was too lazy to put on the button band. Um, so this is my first time doing a button band and was very happy with it. This was my first time doing the button band um, and I was pleased I didn't have to rip it out. I really tried to pay attention to making sure I was picking up the right edge, um, that it lays flat, it doesn't curl. Definitely far from perfect. Like there are these little nubbins here that I could have done a better job with. Um, but if I'm being perfectly honest, I was working on this around 11.30 midnight, 1 a.m., watching one of the last days of the legislative floor session debate. And just needed to keep myself awake. So the fact that I did this whole button band like late at night and it turned out this great, please this punch with. Also my first time doing buttons and the buttonholes, pleased with that. So all in all, like, I like it. The fit is fine. It fits better through this raglan than my Felix pullover does, which I like. The only downfall in my opinion not even a pattern downfall, but just like for me and my preferences is the wide neckline. I think I could probably put some elastic in here to cinch it in a bit. Um, I am knitting this cardigan again for Teresa. So we both have this pattern and this yarn. Um, so that'll be a take two for me. Teresa is teeny tiny little lady. And this was a size two on US 10. So the needle the needles the pattern calls for and I'm right at gauge. So I'm going to do a one for Teresa, maybe even try and do sweater map to make it a little smaller, but I don't trust myself enough to do that if I'm being perfectly honest because I'm a words person, not a math person. So we'll see what I decide to do. But all in all, really like the fit. Here's the cuff. And then I'm wearing pants that I sewed. Warning. I'm on a big sewing kick right now. And these are the Esty pants. It's part of the Esty set from Tilly and the Buttons. Um, they are a wide leg, high-waisted, cropped pant. And I use this adorable mustard gingham. And this was my first time sewing a pair of pants since probably seventh grade home rec class and when I made pajama pants. So I'm pretty pleased with how they look. 
Um, the gingham doesn't line up, but I do not care. And I learned kind of a new skill around the waistband. These are definitely a beginner friendly pattern. Um, the top I also finished, and I'll talk about that more later, uh, but I did not find that one as beginner friendly just because the notes weren't great, but the pants, cool. Okay, that's what I'm wearing. Finished object time. Well, I already talked about this in great detail, so I'm not gonna talk any more about it. So I will now talk about the pair of socks that I finished. These are the All the Frill Socks by Summer Lee Knits. I used a 50 gram mini set from Lavender Loon, not a mini set, a 50 gram sock set from Lavender Loon. This was part of Sam's 2023 Moon Fade series. Each 50 gram and then each mini um, faded on their own. So I used maybe July, June or July. The colorway's name was Coconuts. And this is the main color. This is the contrast color. In my attempt to use up as much of the contrast color as possible, so I didn't have a just random bunch left over, I started um, this color change near the ball of my foot rather than my usual where the toe decreases would start. What to say about this pattern? It's the second time I've knit this pattern. I did a pretty terrible job keeping track of the rows. So one ankle is a little bit taller than the other, and then one uh, contrast color section is smaller than the other, which I blame completely on the legislature because these were my socks that I really watched during legislative floor session or when I had time to kill uh, in between committees while I was waiting around, would sit on a bench or sit outside and just knit for a little bit um, when I was just trying to stay sane. So I did do a really wonderful job tracking even, even though I use light bulb stitch markers, but it's fine. They fit me, that's all that matters. I wore them with white sneakers the other day and they were pretty cute if I say so myself. Um, so glad I finished these. I'll probably knit another pair eventually for my mom. Um, and then I had a friend who also knit ruffle socks, um, but she did them tall and then folded it down a little bit. And I thought that look was adorable. So maybe I'll do that. But anyways, socks, finished. I cast those on in April as part of the shop hop finished them uh almost now just recently at the end of may so pretty good for just touch and go working on it here and there my next finished object is the true story cowl by casey hurley this is a new pattern that came out um just a couple days ago and it's so it's available now if you visit casey's instagram or her ravelry designer page you'll see it it's so cute. When she posted this, I was like, I need to test that. I want to. And I just really love the design of it. Um, you've got this straight line going all the way up, which I think is a nice feature. Just a little bit of ribbing. And then it's a cowl. As implied by the name, True Story Cowl. So this was the third one that I knit. And it is definitely a little bit bigger than the other two that I made. And this one, but I just, I really like the fit of it. I used two, two threads. Wow, two strands. My brain just broke. Did you see my brain just break? I used two strands of Knitting for Olive Compatible Cashmere and Dusty Artichoke. And then I used a strand of, I forget the yarns, the name, of Surrey from a yarn manufacturer that's commercial and pretty easy to find in the low price point. Um, you'll see it on my Ravelry project page. So it's Surrey and then two lace weights held together and it makes this like super squishy, super drapey fabric. I love the color, like this is a very me color. Um, I knit two others. So my first was done in the Little Fiber Co. slash formerly known as the Yarn Addict, um, their Winter Solstice mini fade set, six minis um, that I got from my friend Courtney and a D-stash. And I used up a good chunk of those minis and my gauge was definitely a lot tighter and it was a, um, not stiff because it's still beautifully soft, but like definitely more of a structured cowl. 
I gifted that to my mother-in-law for Mother's Day. So then I knit a second one using a mini set from Knitting Lizard. Uh, it's a set that has not been released yet, so I haven't posted about it uh, because Liz asked me to keep it under wraps until she publishes the July colorway inspo. And let me tell you, you should just get it. Like plan now on saving a little bit of money for the sock set. It's inspired by mint mojitos and the colors are glorious. And it's the most beautiful fade. Um, so I'll show this on the next podcast episode because I can't now. Same structure, right? Because it was two strands of fingering weight, sock yarn, merino nylon. So definitely more structured, a little bit smaller. And then um, I realized I had no cowl to do finished object photos for the promotion of the pattern. So I knit a third and I knit this uh, this one out of the really drapey Surrey and cashmere yarn. I can't wait to wear this in the winter, like under a coat, it's so soft. So uh, 10 for 10 would recommend this pattern. I knit three of them in just about 10, 11 days, which is wild while I was knitting all the other things. It was a very good palette cleanser I was watching this during floor sessions. Um, it is a good um, vanilla knitting project and it's pretty easy to figure out to modify, um, to make your own, which is why I really love Casey's patterns. She writes them with the knitter in mind and the knitter's experience and makes it pretty easy to figure out how you wanna customize it for you, whether that's playing around with fabric types, um, fading, not fading, color blocking, whatever. So would recommend. It's going to be my go-to gift knit, I think, this year. All right. And then my next finished object is a test knit for Jen Steingas, Jennifer Steingas. Uh, she hadn't posted or published a pattern for a while. So this is the first pattern I've seen from her. I don't know when it's going to be released. Um, it doesn't have a pattern name. Um, I haven't really posted about it, but I'll just show you kind of a little peek of the half of it. <laughs> I'll talk about it more on a full episode. Um, once I can point to the pattern name when it's out, I will just say the yarn is from Fiber MacGyver, both the contrast color and the main color, and I'm obsessed. So there's that. Very cute. I'll talk about it more. And that's all my finished objects. I have three whips to share with you today have not really touched my crochet blanket, mostly because I have test deadlines coming up. And then my Hello From My Colors crop, I did maybe two or three rows and I am not sure that I love the color. So I'm just letting, letting those colors sit there and I'll work on it when I have the brain space to make a decision. But at this moment, my, my uh, where I'm at, I can't make a decision. And so that means picking out any sort of color work is on hold. So let's start out, I have my list over here so I don't forget. Uh, let's start out with one that I have knit. This is my fifth, I've knit five. This is the Ranunculus. You all know this pattern. Here it is. It is that bright. Uh, it is Knitting for Olive Merino in Flamingo, nope pink daisies and poppy. So a pink and an orange. Let me tell you the long history of this yarn. <laughs> so one of the skeins of blood orange, not poppy, blood orange is left over from my scarf that I did, the small fry scarf. Then I had three of those skeins that I was going to make into a hello for my colors. Then I decided that that vibe was not what I wanted. It was looking like Christmas and making it look more red than the orange, ready orange it is. And then Dandelion Fiber Co. said they were gonna do a tank along. And the pattern was the home camisole. And I thought, great, I will pick up some pink to hold with the orange and make it marled and it'll be a fun, bright tank top. If you watch my Shepherd's Harvest video, you know that that got frogged. That tank was just not the fit for me. I have finally realized I am not a triangle shaped top person. I have such a large bust. I don't like things sitting low on me. That's just like my fit preference. And so triangle shaped tops tend to not give me the fit that I want or to make up for my bust size. They're really puckery and they sit out far under my arms and get a little baggy. So after starting that tank top, the cami, 
and joining in the round and trying it on. I was like, this, is, this isn't doing it for me. And it was also way too big. So I finally decided that I wanted to make another ranunculus with them. So I am doing two strands of fingering held double on size six, on size six knitting needles. My friend Casey helped me with knitting math and we determined because of my gauge and then the amount of ease that I wanted, I should knit a size nine. Well, I knit a size nine, joined in the round, knit about an inch, tried it on. And I think it was just, I wanted a little bit less ease than that. So now I, I ripped back. My stitch count is all wacky because depending on what size you use, your sleeve versus front and back uh, markers are going to be different. So it's like a size nine setup, but really only to a size six increase, kind of. So it's a little hackish. I think it'll be fine. I've knit this pattern enough that I can, I think, guess that it's gonna be okay. Famous last words. So you'll see once it's done, but um, I'm really liking the fabric. It is not as drapey of a fabric because of the smaller needle size, which I really like. I have found that with my other ranunculuses, it's very easy for the stitches to get caught on something and then they stretch out. I also like um, how the pattern sits differently when there's less drape to it or less of um, a looser gauge. Everything's a little bit tighter. Imagine that. Not having a loose gauge means it's a tighter knit. But you know what I mean. I like how the pattern looks knit up this way. Um, the lace work is really pretty. I skipped the front rows. And then I think last time I did a couple of knit rows in the front. This time from the ribbing, I went straight into the first section of the lace. So definitely have modified this. Definitely am kind of going my own direction. Um, but I did take decent notes on my project page. Um, mostly so I could remember that if I happen to really like how this fits me at this gauge, I could recreate my size chaos that it is. I will say I learned, I realized that I was doing the increases wrong um, on the other four ranunculuses that I have knit. The increases are knit front back and knit back front, which I was just doing knit front and back both times. And I've always thought it looked a little sloppy, but because usually my pattern size, I only do one or two increase rounds. It wasn't really noticeable. Um, but this time you can tell that I'm doing it right because the raglan looks a lot neater than it has in the past. So imagine that if you slow down and you don't just scan a pattern, you know, you, you, you knit it the right way. So good job. Uh, it is in my That Crafty Little Fox project bag. So this I started the Friday before Memorial Day and have gotten some good work into it, even after ripping out maybe two inches and uh, doing the increase section one more time. My next whip is the attestment for Samantha Guerin. It is the seagrass tank. I think that's what Sam has landed on. It is a beaut. I'm really excited about this one and really hoping that it fits. I will just say it is a beautiful fit, top-down construction, um, starting with the back, pick up for the front, and it has this beautiful lace motif all the way along the pattern, the front, the back, um, the straps. So I have knit the back, I did some of the shaping in the back, and now I am on the front and I am finishing up my second strap and then I'll join the front and eventually be in the round. Um, I've been working off and on this for maybe two weeks now, touch and go. Um, I purchased the yarn for this at Shepherd's Harvest and it, the colorway is Vanilla Bean on the Merino Linen Base from Fiber MacGyver. So really, also, at first the back was like a little bit of a labor because it doesn't go quick right and you have to pay attention but once I figured out the flow of the pattern I could definitely figure out how to read where I left off it's just kind of gone smooth from there and I really have done a good chunk of work even in just the past 24 hours so that will be out July early July is tentatively the published date um, so I'll be sure to share more about that as I work on it and once the pattern's out 
and it is in my Barley Pearls Pyrex bag. Oh, this one is so cute. All right, and my last whip I'm going to talk about today, but I do have more, uh, is my new pair of socks. I cast these on last Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, the week before Memorial Day, the week I'm going into Memorial Day. And I am just doing a pair, I'm working on self-striping yarn. And I'm doing the stack of books pattern by Sockwitry by Lindsay. The colorway name is Book Boyfriend from Nomadic, Nomadic Yarns. Really pretty moody colors. Um, I am liking the stack of books because the pearl bumps show kind of the color changes in between the stripes. So it's not a perfect color changing stripe because you can see the pearl bumps. But my at first I was going to rip it all out and my friends were like, no, it's why would you rip it out? And I, I like it. It's a little, um, a little bit more texture. So I'm doing my version of two at a time, which is basically just two small circs at the same time. Here we go. So this will probably take me another month or so to finish. They're officially my summer hiking socks in that I work in them when we're in the car going to a state park or somewhere to hike or walking around because they're very easy to do. Um, and they are perfect for walking around because they're in my beautiful sister Heather project bag using the spin cycle iced dyed yarn that I love so much. Okay acquisitions should we do acquisitions quick so the first acquisition well shepherd's harvest here's the link to the video watch it if you haven't i talk all about the things i got and how much fun it was and it was like a short video like 20 minutes maybe anywho so this came in the mail this is from yarnaceous fibers maggie in salt lake city and the colorway name is uh illusions and Thunderstruck Princess. It's from her Mario collection that she did. Um, and I love it. It's DK weight, which I'm excited about. I really like how DK socks fit and squish my feet. And so this will eventually be a pair of socks, maybe later this summer. And they'll go quick, which will feel nice. Sometimes sock patterns are great just for feeling like it's that quick instant gratification process. Uh, so we'll see. Anyway, so cute. And then the next thing I got is the Lumos, Lumos light. Um, and this was gifted to me and it came in this really cute box. You all know what the light is. You've seen it. We've all seen the ads around Christmas time when they blow up. Um, but I will say, I really like mine. I have mine upstairs on my bed because I've been using it not just to knit in the dark or when it's darker out, but also to read at night when Chris goes to bed and I still want to keep reading. I have always typically read on my Kindle. Um, I don't know why I said Kindle. My iPad using Kindle Unlimited. Uh, but now I can read actual books and I can use the warm light setting. So it's like definitely dimmer, that very soft light and it doesn't bother him. I love it. 10 for 10 would recommend this. I also think it's going to be great for car rides when I'm being queen passenger princess and Chris, we're going to Wisconsin or it's dark or whatever and I can knit and then it won't bother Chris as he's driving. Um, I've used it when we've had a bonfire in the backyard. I think it's going to be great for camping. Headlights are fine and all, but I also, or like the headlamps, but I'm excited. I really like the neck feature and it has three different light settings. Anyways, I'm not getting paid for this, but was gifted. So I want to acknowledge that but would really recommend it. So those are my acquisitions. Let's talk spinning, because I've been spinning quite a bit. First, I finished the tweed spin I shared on my last podcast episode. I ended up with four skeins, closer to 700 yards of a mostly heavy DK, but sometimes fingering, sometimes worsted weight yarn. This is from Gwen Erin Fiber Co. I love this. I was thinking it would be, I don't, I thought the fade would maybe be a little bit softer, especially because I thought there was a little bit more purple, but when it spun up, it was definitely less purple, but here's the order of it. 
I think I'm going to make a Metamorphic by Andrea Mowry. I really liked how that sweater fits me when I knit it before. And I think I could fade these in a way that it looks really nice. And then I have the most beautiful navy yarn that you've heard me talk about from Plaid Perch uh, that I will hold with my hand spun. So this will be a someday project, not anytime soon, but it is really soft. And I think the colors are really quite pretty. My next spin is from fiber I purchased at this year's Shepherd's Harvest, and it is fiber from Lavender Loon. And I'm getting Sam's monthly fiber club, but what's great about this fiber is that it is from her own flock. I think it's Corydale, Shetland. The bag is over there and I'm not gonna go get up and get it. Um, and the colorway is all of you. We all know I love a Lavender Loon green. Um, this is, I played around with long draw a little bit on this one. Um, and so some sections are pretty thin and some sections have a little bit more uh, billow to it. I haven't set it and thwacked it yet. Thwacking is basically slamming it or um, pulling and creating tension to help distribute the spin, distribute, distribute the spin. I am an, I overspin. Um, I hyper surprise is anybody surprised that I'm an overspinner like high stress overly anxious person of course I'm going to overspin something um but usually once I set it it'll uh look real nice and evens out pretty well and once I knit it it looks great so that was my first spin about 220 yards and then my next spin has been languishing on my bobbin for a while. It is from Hello Yarn. It was the fiber club I did last year. Um, I forget what month it was. It's on Rambouillet and it is so pretty. I'm really happy with this spin. This might be my state fair spin that I submit. Um, pretty consistent I think about 220 yards I would say sport weight fingering to sport weight and I think it's really pretty again a little overspun that's what I do it's who I am um so I still need to uh soak it and set it but I really enjoyed spinning this one it sat on my bobbin the first bobbin sat spun up and then I was like maybe a quarter of the way into bobbin number two and just put it down for a couple months and then randomly decided this week to pick it up and I'm really glad I did because it turned out nicely and then I started a new spin and it is this really beautiful um targy bamboo silk blend also from hello yarn um the january 2024 month it has bits of brown gray green cream um i'm spinning it on my matchless trying to go for a very consistent lace to fingering weight um so when i apply it it'll be like a sport fingering to sport weight this one is spinning pretty consistently. So you can tell I've been spending a little bit more time at my wheel um, and I'm getting happy, happy results because of it. Imagine that when you don't just pick up and go every couple of months, you get a little bit more consistent. Let's do a little sewing chit chat. It's been a hot second since I've talked about sewing on this podcast, probably since around this time last year because I am very much uh, a sewist, sewer. People have strong opinions about that. Uh, I sew when it is warm out because I want to wear dresses and skirts and boxy tank tops with my knits. And in the past week and a half, I have sewn three, two things. Plus I have a sewing project in the works. So first here is the top to my, what was it? SD set from Tilly and the Buttons using gingham that I purchased from Craft Emporium in Portland. It is a pretty simple construction, but I will say the pattern was a little confusing to my very novice um, sewing skill set. And I had to go into the fabric shop to get a little bit of technical assistance, but figured it out. Really like the fit. I love this cute little, where's the tag? Where's the tag? Oh, wrong pattern. I'll show you the other, the tag I was thinking about that's on a different top. 
if I was to do this again, I would go up a size. It's a little snug on me. It's very cropped, which is fine because it fits with these very high-waisted pants. Um, here's another picture of the set. Very cute. I would make the straps wider, um, probably an inch wide, because my bra strap does sit out. Again, who cares? But I also just like to know that um, I like to have my bra straps covered too, sometimes. Just kidding. Bus starts, all those things. So happy with it. Clearly I need to do a better job cutting the ends, but that's fine. So I finished that Tilly and the Button set in basically a marathon sewing. I did it in a whole day. That's what happens with me in sewing. So I just like fixate on it and I don't want to stop and put things away and then get it back out again. So then I'll just sew it all at once, which then means I make dumb mistakes. So I'm trying very hard to slowly work on things work in progress. I knit or sewed, I knit this. I sewed this Wednesday last week. Um, I took the day off of work and this was um, just about a yard of fabric linen from Merchant and Mills. That was a remnant that I got on sale. Um, this is the Ashton top from Helen's Closet. Super simple pattern, has bust darts, nice wide straps, higher neck, um, here's that tag I was telling you about. Isn't that cute? A little sun. And I didn't have enough fabric to do um, the bias and the facing using the fabric. And I remembered I still had bias tape. And I've only ever used bias tape once. And so this was my second time using it, which like, if you sew a lot, you're like, yeah, duh, good job, Emily, you did it. I was like, I know. I can do this differently and we'll have the same result and I can still get away with not having enough yardage. And I will say my sewing is a lot better around um, where I put the bias tape and then did the top stitch. See, I'm remembering. Um, it looks a lot better than it has in the past. So even that was fun to see like some immediate progress from last year's sewing project. Um, nice. I had to cut the fabric in half to get yardage instead of doing the front and the back on the fold. I had to do a mirror of the back and so I just seamed it up the edge. Did not line it up very well, but that's okay because it's mine and I made it. And you know what? I'm troubleshooting. And that to me felt like a major win. And then the next pattern I'm knitting right now is the Sid tie dress. I can't remember the pattern designer's name, so here it is. Um, this is kind of all over the Instagram right now. My colleague Britta sent this to me and I started this on Monday cause it was rainy and I'm using this really lovely Kaufman. Um, I think that's right. Linen rayon blend and this really beautiful blue. So I made the top part. I'm doing this sleeveless dress cause can you, this can be so cute with, even with this cardigan, like, hello, uh, I'm joining the tie movement that's happening. Um, this pattern is written for long sleeve, sleeveless, top, or dress. So I'm doing the sleeveless dress. I finished the front part. I still need to do my binding on the inside of my arm. Um, I could, I was getting a little sloppy with my sewing, so I stopped before I got frustrated and made a silly mistake. Um, but basically the top's done, just have to do that and then join my bottom two tiers. Uh, so I sewed the two tiers together, the middle tier and the bottom tier. I added my pockets already. So probably just another hour or two of work to join it all together. Um, the tiers are pretty big right now. And so I might take the pattern of my fabric into the shop to get some advice on how to um, grade it so the fit is a little less baggy and oversized. Some more to come. All right, I don't, if you're a sewer and that was painful for you to listen to me talk about uh, sewing and I know very little about it, I apologize. If you don't sew, I hope that inspired you because if I can figure this out, you can figure it out. YouTube has taught me so much. And if you have a fabric shop near you, um, I bet they'll be really lovely and help you with any technical questions. Okay, happenings. Uh, we've reached the end of show and tell. Let's talk about life and things that are happening with life. Uh, first of all, the legislative session ended. I'm not going to talk about it because it was really difficult for me and very frustrating. 
and we're just gonna move on. But it's done and that means I can take time off and I can uh, recharge and take care of myself. There is a new romance bookstore in South Minneapolis. I have gone twice. I'm gonna insert some footage of it. They have, it's like just beautiful. They have dragons, like paper dragons, very like nice nod to Iron Flame. Um, obsessed. So I've gone twice. I uh, picked up a new book that I can't remember the name of right now. I'll put a picture of it here. I'm about 90 pages in and I like it. They're like, if you like Fourth Wing, you will like this. And I was like, cool, here we go. Can confirm it's great. Uh, the Northern Lights were viewable down here. You could really only see the subtle color through your phone, but I did take some footage of it because you can see them softly moving. I hadn't seen the Northern Lights before, and that was really remarkable. Um, Chris and I ended up going and driving about 40 minutes south of the cities to try and get away from the light pollution. Um, and that was really cool. Shepherd's Harvest, I have a whole video on it, so I'm not gonna talk about it here. If you wanna see the see, see the sights, see what I got, go watch that video. Um, and then finally, like it's summer is emerging. It has been 60s and 70s almost all of May, which has been so dreamy to actually have a spring. Lately, I feel like we haven't been getting much of like the fall or the spring season. It goes straight to being cold or it goes straight to being really hot. Like it's the end of May and I'm wearing a cardigan um, and I'm very comfortable. So I've just been savoring this weather. Chris and I went for our first summer hike. Uh, I jokingly told Chris last night, I was like, what do you think about once a week trying a new ice cream shop in the Twin Cities and trying to figure out what our favorite ice cream place is? So I think I'm gonna manifest that and make that happen. I think with time off, I'm gonna try and go down and help at get Ben's farm more, help Teresa out at the mill if she'll have me. Um, knitting escapades wise, um, I might go to Sunday Fun Day this Sunday, June 2nd on the farm. Zombie Knit Apocalypse is coming up. Um, I'm sure I will film and post a full length episode before then, so more on that. Um, but lots of fun knitting things ahead. I have a work trip the second week of June where I'm in Chicago for a couple of days or a suburb of Chicago. So really just embracing quiet. So getting out my sewing, spinning, knitting, uh, reading books again, being outside before the mosquitoes are out, and recharging, which feels really nice. All right, I think this is gonna be a really long episode. So I'm gonna turn it over to the vlog footage. I hope wherever you are, you are well, and I'll check in with you next time. just went to Lakes Makery, which is a fabric shop in South Minneapolis. I wanted everything in there, including the $40 a yard fabric. Why do I have such good taste? A gift and a curse. It is so pristine in there. The most adorable fabrics and patterns. I went to get buttons for my cardigan, but ended up buying a pattern. So I had some restraint. I didn't buy the fabric.